Hello fellow YouTubers, now today I'm gonna make a video about how to make a knife from a steel cap which I got from this boot which I'll walk through so I lost the sole, I lost everything and the shoe completely destroyed you can throw it away but I thought give it a try and make a knife out of this toe cap because it's a pretty good steel now what I do first, if I have a steel from an unknown source, I'm gonna make a spark test and normally I'm gonna make a hardening and heat treating test too but in this case we try first of all the spark test and then we see how much carbon the piece has and what I'm gonna do is just take the angle grinder and grind away a corner here or here and see how the sparks are developing and the more stars you get into the sparks the better it is Okay now from the spark test I saw that we have a middle carbon steel so it's not a very high carbon steel and it's not a low carbon steel so we should get a pretty good result from this knife. What I'm gonna do is we try to get the biggest piece out of this possible and I'm gonna cut open here also thinking I could open here a little bit and the rest we're gonna forge flat Okay, now first of all I'm gonna cut this pieces open with an angle grinder, with a cutting disc. You can also use a hacksaw. Uh, I think you need a little bit longer, but it's not a problem at all. Okay, well now I just cut these two slots in here, as you see, with a cutting disc, angle grinder, no problem at all. And what we're gonna do is heat up the whole piece to a pretty nice orange glow, so we can flatten it out and maybe we're gonna get some cracks over here going if we open this piece up but maybe we can keep it so it won't open up too much at least we're gonna get out this piece here if we flatten it out and this piece here so it should be about 12 14 centimeters and out of that we're gonna make our knife okay well now first of all we're gonna try get something flat out of this piece and uh, we're gonna heat it up, flatten it a little bit out and we'll see what we're gonna get. Well, plus quick up to my hammer what I did, I rounded out the round side a bit more so we get even more forging dimples and the flat side I also rounded out just a little bit more because it was way too flat and always hitting with the corners because I have such a great flat surface uh, that I needed to round it out a little bit more. it out, pre-shape it a little bit and do most by stock removal. 
No. What I did is took the piece and cut off this middle section here, and that is for a quench test. I'm gonna heat this up to quenching temperature, put it in the oil, and see what it gets. bites into it a little bit but it got hard at least it cuts a bit hard what we're gonna do again with this piece we try to quench it in water and see if it ruptures or if it holds up much better but a little bit so that means we need to quench in water else we don't get any hardness at all or any useful hardness at all in water quenched we got a little bit of a useful hardness so that means steel toe cap we gotta make a knife out of you okay now we're gonna take a bacon stone in German it would be called a bacon stone and don't know how it's called in English, it's a very very soft stone, you can scratch with your fingernails and it's almost like chalk, so you can paint on metal with it, but it's heat resistant. We're gonna try to make a knife shape onto this piece. I think this will be pretty nice, a little knife. I'm gonna cut out the shape now with an angle grinder and then I'm going to forge the bevels a little bit, so the blade widens up a little, and then I'm going to quench the piece, or pre-grind it again, quench it, and so on and so on. You will see. Now a tiny bit of bevel forging and straightening the whole piece completely that it's almost flat or at least as flat as we can get it and then we're ready to heat treat. I think 
that was a successful quench. And fire still bites a little bit into, but I mean that's the best we can get out of this deal. So yeah, you have to deal with what you get. Now we're gonna grind the bevels a little bit and refine the shape again and then we're ready to drill the holes and put the handle on and just as always we're gonna blow torches I love this word okay yeah, now first of all we're going to try with a 2.9 drill bit and then ream it up with a 3.0. Uh, now, 3mm reamer. Ah, I hit my leg. Fucking drawer. Ah, fucking shit. Shin bone is too fragile. Ah, you mean shin bone, not good. Okay, well, I found this real nice pine cone pieces. Don't know if you can see it, but there are pine cones inside. Here you can see it. And I chose this piece with an empty space here because I wanted to be able to see the engraving of the toe cap. And for the back side, we're gonna use a full pine cone. Hope you can see it. So, here yeah, is almost a full pine inside. Now, I'm gonna flatten the surfaces and then I'm gonna drill the holes, finish the front side as always, and then I'm gonna glue on the handle scales. Okay, well, now after finishing the front side, you see it looks pretty awesome, pretty amazing very good see through and now take the blade for security and safety and safety for the blade <laughs> and now I'm going to clean everything with acetone first of all I'm going to remove the bolts from here now just clean it off look at all the clamps I need are here Yes, I have four pieces, that's more than enough. Now, that's it, clean the whole thing with acetone and glue the handle scales on to it. You took way too much, you know, way too much. Okay, now we let it dry. Then we're gonna remove the glue in the front. And then we can finish the handle. And to show you once more, just gonna take my bone piece. And the glue is already set as far that it doesn't stick anymore, but it's still soft and malleable. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just rolling off the glue to the last 
last bit and that's it and you get completely clean very nice clean surface on here as you see it's perfectly coming apart I really love this method method because it works perfectly you don't need any chemicals you don't need anything at all just a little piece of bone that's it now the knife is clean we can unclamp it because the glue is set already as far that it doesn't stick anymore and it holds up very well uh, but I'm gonna still let it dry completely and then oh you can already see through the numbers and letters and uh, now next thing we're gonna cut off the rivets and then we're pretty much finished to finish the handle well 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 now the knife has dried completely the glue is cured and now we can start grinding the handle I'm gonna do it on my belt center but you also can do it with a file with a rasp with just sanding paper it will take a long while but you can do it um, same as the knife you can grind it also by hand or with an angle grinder the bevels the surfaces but I would recommend to grind it by hand if you have no power tools because then you get the nicest surface and you can go grid by grid from 240 up to uh, 800,000 whatever you want you can go to mirror finish if you want to but for a simple knife like this I just recommended a 400 to 600 grit I've ground my knife to 600 grit the belt sander because I have a belt sander, I will make it on a belt sander, it's way more easy, way faster than by hand. But my expensive knives, my custom made knives, I'm all finishing up by hand every time. That's one main purpose why they are so expensive, because it takes a while, a long while, and it's a lot of labor to polish the blade perfectly, so there's no scratch there, which should not be there. Uh, yeah, but for uh, cheap easy knife like this there is a machine grind on it or even you can make a hand grind by 400 you can stop so next thing as I said we're gonna do is grind the handle completely I'm gonna grind it on a machine to about 240 grit and after machine grinding we're gonna go hand polishing uh, with a 400 600 800 thousand grit same as in the front here so I want it completely clear and then we go on a buffing wheel shape is finished and finished it with 120 grit I think that should be enough and now I'm gonna start with 240 grit and remove all the scratches and when the scratch is all gone I'm gonna go up to 400, 600, 800, 1000 and then we're ready for the buffing wheel Now just to show you how sharp you can get a steel toe cap. Ah, almost have no hair on my hand left over. So as you see it's shaving sharp. Not razor sharp because this piece is not 60 HRC. Else I would call it razor sharp, but this piece is just shaving sharp. And after polishing, I think my logo, my trademark sign turned out pretty good. It's not as beautiful as it could be. Maybe I was up there too long, but it looks okay. Oh, it's just, just gliding through. See that? This is a damn sharp knife. So.
not all about the steel as Mr. Hoffman, Liam Hoffman once said from Hoffman Blacksmithing, he's a very nice guy, I like his video about edge geometry and he's absolutely right if you would split a steel or split a brass rod or try to split it with this knife it would be destroyed because the edge geometry is very thin and made very sharp and it's not a chopper it's like a kitchen knife or a skinner knife it's made for soft tissue it's made for soft wood you could should not even cut extreme hard woods with it uh, like hickory could be already too hard but it would work but ebony wood or something like that I would not recommend to cut with a knife like this because its edge geometry is just not made for it so and that's why it glides through this standing paper like nothing because the edge geometry is just as awesome and as thin that's the main point oh no it didn't work at well as well didn't get the first cut then you won't get it at all so soft wood could work very well and you see it taking off very nice thin shavings you can even use it as a plane almost if it's that sharp but you should not drag the tip in and bend it around even ah, with the soft wood it could work but you could bend your tip which does not happen in this case yeah, I'm proud of that pretty good for this small piece, I have to say, that's pretty good, pretty impressive. So, I mean, it's really soft wood, just some pine wood, so not very hard stuff. But as you see, the surface of the cut is very clean, very smooth. That's because of the polish of the blade if the more you polish your blade or the more you polish your cutting edge the more beautiful the surface of the cutted piece will be yeah okay now I hope you like this video please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and thanks for watching